G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today we've had towed into the workshop a Hyundai Getz 2008 model 1.4 litre engine. That's right, it got towed in. She's a no start situation. What's wrong? Dunno, let's check it out together. I also noticed that the reds on the dash were basically not there. Check the battery and she was for schnookered. Notice here state of health is 5%, state of charge is zero. It says charge and retest and that's what I've done. Now I've had the battery on charge all night and it's ready to be tested yet again. I've put a globe on it to get rid of any surface charge uh, to make sure that the battery is stable, ready to be tested. At the moment you can see that it's 12.96 volts, but let's test it. And it's saying replace it. Standard 49%, it's fully charged at about 98%, but state of health, anything below 50 is classified as a replace. And look, this battery was dead when I came in. It was below 10 volts. I suggest that the customer get another battery, but first let's check the engine, make sure that it's in good condition and that the car is worth accepting a new battery. The customer decided that the oil level was a little bit low. After all, it is miles overdue for a service or kilometres. She topped it up, drove up the road, then all of a sudden white smoke out the exhaust pipe and it stopped. How much oil did she put in? As you can see on the dipstick, there's a full mark. There's an F right there. Is that where she topped it up to? Let's have a look. Well, not so much. Okay, that is where it should be. That's where she's put it up to. I reckon there's probably, I'd say three liters, four liters too much. What problems could that cause to the engine? Well, there could be hydraulic lockup where fluid gets above the piston and then fluid is non-compressible of course, and smack, the piston hits up against that fluid and locks up the engine, can bend con rods, crack pistons, all sorts of stuff. I'm hoping that this hasn't happened here. Perhaps we can just drain the oil and maybe it stopped because the spark plugs got fouled or something, who knows? So let's just turn the motor over by hand just to make sure that it's not seized up. I'm now down at the crankshaft turning it over by hand. Now of course there's compression that I'm fighting against but I don't believe I have any hydraulic lockup. Um, so that's a good sign. Hydraulic lockup is when the fluid gets above the piston, and that spells disaster. But hopefully we've just had too much crankcase pressure, and it's uh, gone into the inlet manifold and fouled the spark plugs. Ah, plenty of compression, that's for sure. Okay, so let's see how much we need to drain from this poor beast to get it back to a proper level. It's going to be a lot. There she blows. Look, I've drained a heap of oil out of the poor old thing, and I've got it pretty much up to the correct level here, around about there, that should be fine. How much did she actually add to the poor thing? Let's count them, Jim. One, two, three, three and three quarter litres of oil that I drained off. Keep in mind that the dipstick is now full, or the oil level is correct. Three and three quarter litres, too much oil. How much is this little engine meant to take? According to our Castrol Data Tech site, the little beast takes 3.3 litres. How much over four was it? 3.75. Hmm, interesting. Houston, I think we've found our problem. I'm just pulling out the spark plugs in case some oil has got into the cylinder. I want to double check before I actually try and start the thing. So let's have a look. And, ah, look at that. Nice and oily, hey? Yeah, <laughs> they're pretty had it. Um, I might just give them a quick clean, just to see if I can get it up and running. Then I'll let the customer know what they actually need. They're gonna need spark plugs, a new battery, um, and then, you know, gonna have to clean out the intake system, I guess. It's probably uh, through the throttle body, etc., etc. But yeah, not real good, hey? Even if these spark plugs weren't oil fouled, they are for schnookered, mate. I tell you what, this one in particular, have a look at it. It's past its abuse by date, something chronic. What I'm going to do now is try and get all the oil out of the pots, have a look at the intake system, clean up the spark plugs, just whack them back in for test purposes only, see if I can get this thing started. I've disconnected the two ignition coil leads here so that when I crank it over I don't get any spark in here because I don't want like a fire. 
I've chucked in some Aerostart type stuff just in each of the cylinders a little bit to try and thin out the oil. And then I'll just use a dirty old rag to try and cover it to try and catch the oil as it spits up. Might even weigh it down a little bit because obviously the compression's gonna wanna blow it out. There you go, just a couple of blocks of wood on there just to hold the rag while it goes up and down, obviously because the compression is gonna wanna force it off. So all I can do is try it now. She wasn't lying when she said it was overdue for service. 117,000 kilometers. What's on the clock? The clock says 142.679. Hmm. I think she was correct when she said that it was overdue for a service and needed a bit of oil. All right, let's see if this is a good idea or not. I'm just going to crank it over, see if I can get rid of some of the oil that's in the cylinder. Well, that seemed okay. Let's have a look behind door number one. Yeah, there's not much coming out at all. It's fairly dryish. Nice smell of ether though. It's nice. Um, look, all I can do is whack in those plugs and see if it's going to work. Uh, the plugs, of course, need replacement, but um, we'll see if we can get the thing fired up first. I've used a points file just to clean up the spark plug electrode here. That's a points file for you guys that aren't as old as I am. Um, just to clean up the uh, electrode, the earth and the positive, just to give it all the help that it uh, can get uh, to try and start this engine. Of course I'll replace these spark plugs, but it's no use replacing them unless the engine, you know, it's going to go, if it's okay. As you can see, I've pulled off the intake ducting and it's actually dribbled down the front of the engine. That's how bad it is. There's uh, oil coming out here, here, and of course over here there's a big drop uh, let's have a look over here. <laughs> oh, dude, not healthy, hey? Eh? Check that out. And even the air filter's copped it, check it out. Hang on, fella, where are you? There you go. Air filter's even copped it, so yeah, man, she was lucky. Well, hopefully, you know, I can get it started, etc. There's even a big puddle uh, just here in the rocker cover where I've pulled it off. Uh, there's a big puddle of oil there, so <laughs> there's oil over here, oil over here. And not particularly healthy, so yeah, I've got a bit of cleaning up to do. And of course the throttle body itself has got quite a bit of oil in there. She's all back together as best as I can. You know, there's a lot of oil to clean up around here, etc. So that's just a little bit of the oil that came out of the intake ducting. Yep, went all through the intake system. This is just proof of concept. I want to see if the thing is going to start. So I predict if it does start, heaps of blue smoke out the exhaust. That's my prediction. Okay, let's see what it does. <laughs> I don't think that's good for my camera. Yeah, it's kind of right, hey? Might shift that. <laughs> All right, I better take it for a road test tomorrow morning, I think, and then uh, replace those spark plugs, etc. I'll contact the customer first, see what they want done. I'm just about to go on a road test, but I've decided to use some Subaru upper engine cleaner. Now, I've used this stuff quite a few times before. It's absolutely brilliant. And of course, uh, you have to plumb in some vacuum hose, etc. to go into a vacuum port. The instructions are on the can. Really, really good stuff. And in view of the amount of oil that's going through this, I thought it was a good idea just to give her a bit of a clean, a bit of a tickle on the intake side of things. So I'll do that during my road test. After a good, long, hard road test, I'm back in the workshop and I've replaced the following components. I've done the battery, because remember, that was fully fish nookered. Uh, it was dead as a pork chop. I've done the air filter. As you can see, there's a big line of oil stuck through it. That's not good for filtering. I've done the upper engine cleaner, the Subaru cleaner, which worked really, really well. And I've replaced the spark plugs. Now, good news is with regard to the spark plugs, have a look at them. They're nice and dry. So obviously the good road test as well as the cleaner um, has helped, but those spark plugs needed replacement because they were worn out. Um, remember, it's overdue for a service about 30,000 Ks. You're probably asking yourself, how does overfilling an engine create oil coming up the top? Oil's down the bottom, right? Well, not quite. If you have too much oil in the engine, it builds up crankcase pressure. And that crankcase pressure comes up the top. It increases actual physical pressure. That in turn gets through here, the uh, intake, into the intake, sorry, this uh, breather pipe here. 
and also our PCV, it will blow past that as well and go into our intake system. Of course, it goes into our intake system, past the valves, fouls up the spark plugs, and that's what we saw um, when we pulled the spark plugs out. So that's the reasoning behind it, but 3.75 litres, my goodness me. That is not good news. So it's uh, up and running now, which is fantastic. Um, but yes, yeah, she definitely needs a service done on it um, to look after it and maintain it properly. So there you go, guys. We have completed the repair on this Hyundai Getz 2008 model, 1.4 litre. It's really bucketing down outside. Perhaps we should call this Wet Wednesday Repairs. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. We have to follow the specifications and requirements of an engine to make sure that it runs efficiently. Of course, maintenance, 30,000 Ks. Pew! This thing is getting pretty tired, I would imagine. And of course, 3.75 litres, too much in the crankcase, creates all these sort of issues. So I hope you got something from the video today, guys. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give it a like and feel free to comment down below. Don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. So guys, until next time, this is Miracle Max. I will catch you later.